This is part 37 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we will discuss how to pass data from the child component to parent component using output property. In our previous video, we discussed how we can make use of an input property to pass data from the parent component to child component. So let's quickly review input properties. In the child component, we create a property with add input decorator. Notice within our child component right here, we are creating this employee property and it is decorated with at input decorator. So this employee property is an input property. And then within the parent component, we bind to this input property and then pass the data it needs. Notice here, we are binding to the employee input property of our child component, which is display employee component and then passing it the data it needs. And this child component will display the employee details. So we are using input properties to pass data from the parent component to child component. We discussed this in detail in our previous video. In this video, we'll discuss how to pass data from the child component to the parent component using an output property. Let's understand this with an example. Here is what we want to do. When we click on this employee panel, which is rendered by our child component, display employee component, we want to display this specific employee name in an H1 element just above the panel right here, between the menu and the panel. So we want to pass the employee name from the child component to the parent component, so the parent component can display that name within an H1 element right here. So let's see how to achieve this using output property. So if I click on this employee panel right here, this employee name is Mary. So it should display Mary within that H1 element. So depending on which panel we have clicked, we want to display that specific employee name within an H1 element within our parent component. So we want to pass the employee name from the child component to the parent component. And let's see how to achieve this using an output property. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is create an output property within our child component, display employee component. To create an input property, we use the at input decorator. Along the same lines, to create an output property, we use the output decorator. So first, let's import the output decorator. Next, let's create the property itself. I'm going to name it notify. Since this is an output property, I'm going to decorate it with at output decorator. Now we need to specify the type for our output property. Notice we have specified the type for our input property as employee because the parent component is going to pass an employee object into this child component. Along the same lines, we need to specify the type for our output property. The type for our output property is going to be event emitter. So first, let's go ahead and import event emitter. Now let's set this event emitter as the type for our notify output property. As far as an output property is concerned, one of the very confusing aspects is specifying its type. Now you might be wondering, why are we setting the type of our output property to an event emitter object? Well, that's because a child component uses an event to pass data to the parent component. Now let's quickly recap what data we want to pass from the child component to the parent component and most importantly, when do we want to pass that data. From the child component, we want to pass the name of the employee. So the name of the employee is a string. So the type of data that we want to pass from the child component to the parent component is string. And when do we want to pass that string data? Whenever there is a click event on any of these employee panels right here. So the type of data that we want to pass is string and we want to pass the data when there is a click event on the employee panel. As the name implies, event emitter object helps us emit a custom event because we are going to use an event to pass data from the child component to the parent component. And the type of data that we want to pass is string. So we have set the generic type of the event emitter to string. If you want to pass numeric data, then you set the type to number. If you're not bothered about the type and want to be able to pass any type of data, then you can use any type like this. But this is not a great thing to do because we are losing type safety. 
One important point to keep in mind is using this event emitter object, we can pass only one value. If you want to be able to pass more than one value, then create a custom type, specify your values as properties, and then include that custom type as the argument for this event emitter generic type. In our case, we want to pass only one value, and the type for that value is string, so let's change this back to string. Now, we need to raise this custom event, notify. But the important question that comes to our mind is, when should we raise this event? Well, we should raise this event whenever the user clicks anywhere on this employee bootstrap panel. The HTML for the employee panel is within the view template of our child component. Notice here is the bootstrap panel div, and we have the HTML here, which displays the employee photo and the rest of the details. So on this div element, I'm going to wire up the click event handler. Since this is an event binding, we include a pair of parentheses, and I'm going to name our event handler handle click. We don't have this method within our component class, so let's go ahead and create this. Now, all that is left to do is raise our custom event notify from this handle click method. Notice when I type this dot, we see the notify event. And to raise this event, we use the emit method of the event emitter object. When we emit this event, we also want to pass the name of the employee to the parent component. So to get the name of the employee, we are going to make use of this employee property right here. So this dot employee dot name is going to give us the name of the employee. And we are passing that as the event data. This event data is also commonly called as event payload. Next, in the parent component, we need to bind to this custom notify event. Our parent component is list employees component. So in the view template of list employee component, here we have our child component used as a directive. So let's bind to the notify event. Since this is an event binding, we use a pair of parentheses. When this event is raised, we want to handle it. And to handle that event, I'm going to include this method, handle notify. And remember, when the child component raises this event, it's also going to pass employee name as the event data. And this dollar $event object is going to receive that event payload. We don't have this handle notify method in our component class, so let's go ahead and create it. Now we know this method is going to receive the employee name as event data. Employee name is string, so I'm going to specify the type as string. Now what do we want to do with this event data that we receive from the child component? Well, we want to display that in an H1 element between the menu and this employee panel right here. So within the view template of our parent component, which is list employees component, let's include an H1 element right here. And let's bind this to a property called data from child. We don't have this property yet. We'll create this in just a bit. Let's copy the name of this property and create that within our component class. The type for this property is going to be string. And all we're going to do is within this handle notify method, we are going to assign even data to this data from child property. And we know within our view template, we are binding to that property. So let's save all our changes and then take a look at the browser. Notice on the initial page load, we don't have anything displayed, but when I click anywhere on an employee panel, that respective employee name is displayed as expected. At the moment, we're only displaying employee name one value. Now let's say we want to display employee name as well as their gender. Now we want to be able to pass both the name of the employee and gender as event data. So within our child component, where we are specifying the event type right here, at the moment we are passing employee name, so the type is string, but now we want to pass both employee name and gender. But using this event emitter, we can only pass one value. To be able to pass more than one value, we need to specify a custom type here. We already have a type for our employee, which is employee. 
So let's specify that right here. Notice as soon as we have done that, we have an error right here because the event payload now is of type employee and not string. So let's knock off this name property from the employee object. We need to make a similar change in our parent component. So the type of this property is employee. Along the same lines, the event data type here is employee. And then in the view template, let's bind to the name and gender property. Let's save all our changes and then take a look at the browser. Now let's launch browser developer tools and if we take a look at the console tab, we have a couple of errors here and look at what the error says. Cannot read property name of undefined. The reason we are getting this error is this property data from child. This is null on the initial page load. It's only set when we click on an employee panel. That's when we see the name of the employee and gender. But on the initial page load, this property is null. And we are calling name property on an undefined object. That's why we see this error. Cannot read property name of undefined. To fix this, let's use the safe navigation operator here and here. Notice now we don't have any errors on the console, but we see null two times. That's because data from child in both the cases here is null. Now on the initial page load, we don't want to render this h1 element at all. So I'm going to use the structural directive ngf. So render this h1 element only if data from child is truthy. Notice now we don't have any errors on the console and we also don't see null displayed on the initial page load. And when we click on an employee panel, we see that respective employee name and gender. So we use an output property to pass data from a child component to a parent component. Output properties are not as straightforward as input properties. There are several moving paths. So let's understand these different moving paths one by one. First, we create the output property in the child component. Since it's an output property, we decorate it with at output decorator. Output properties use events to emit data from child component to the parent component. So we are using event emitter object. And to specify the type of data that we want to pass along with the event, we use the event emitter generic type. In this case, we want to pass employee object. So we specify the type here as employee. Next, we need to raise our custom event notify. In our case, we want to raise this notify event whenever a user clicks on the employee panel. So within the view template of our child component, we wire up the click event handler on the div element. So when we click on the div element, we are calling this handle click method, which emits the notify event, passing it the employee object as the event payload. Next, in the parent component, bind to the child component custom event. So in our case, we are binding to the child component notify custom event. When this event is raised, we are handling it using this handle notify method. Now this method receives the event data. In our case, the event data is this employee object. So this parameter right here, $event, receives the event payload. Finally, in the parent component class, include handle notify event handler method. And all this event handler method does is assigns the event data, employee object in this case, to this property, data from child. And our view template binds to that property to display the name of the employee and their gender. I hope output properties make a bit more sense now. In our next video, we'll discuss an easy approach to pass data from the child component to parent component. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.